Praise the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. What a blessing for me to be back in your homes. This is our second week that we are visiting together and I trust that the program last week has blessed you and especially that I've made you think. I believe it's important for us as Christians to be like the Berean church that when we hear something, Go to the scriptures for yourself and look up the scriptures for yourself and search the scriptures for yourself. But thank you to those who are responding, for those who are um, informing us in which way they have been blessed. It's always good to hear from our viewers and to hear how the programs are blessing you or even to hear what are the kinds of questions you have so that we can see how we can through the word of God also answer your questions. You are welcome also if you want to keep uh, the Grace Gospel moving around the world to partner with us. You will see on the screen there will be ways how you can become a part of what we are sharing. Remember, under Grace, we do not compel or force anyone into giving because the Bible say, let each one determine as he purpose in his heart, not reluctantly or out of any grudges, but God loves a cheerful giver. So thank you for those that are um, uh, letting us know how they are being blessed. But today I'm going to continue uh, and I still want to just, um, I'm still laying foundation because from next week I will start with the splitting of the covenants and we will go systematically through the scripture. If you are interested uh, or you want to really know what I teach, because a lot of people say things that I teach that I'm not teaching. And so if you really want to know what am I teaching, uh, I'm only teaching the unadulterated gospel of grace. But today I'm going to take you on a journey and I want to look at the book of Galatians in particular. And with the little time I have, I just want to exegete through the text and just run through uh, the five books very quickly. Uh, but just to give you a summary of what Paul is saying in Galatians chapter 1, especially when Paul is addressing the Galatian churches. The Bible says, Paul says in Galatians chapter 1, verse 6, Paul says, I marvel that you are turning away so soon from him who called you in the grace of Christ to a different gospel, which is not another gospel, but there are some who trouble you and want to pervert the gospel of Christ. But even if we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel to you than what you have been preached, that than when what we have been preached to you, Paul says, let them be a curse. Let them be a curse. As we have said before, so I say again, if anyone preach any other gospel to you than what you have received, let them be a curse. Now, it is important that when you read a scripture that you deal with the context of the scripture. It's important when we read something in a specific book that we understand the context of the book and the context of the writer. Now, Paul is writing here in Galatians. He's writing to the Galatia churches. This is not one church. These are churches in Galatia that was birthed through the ministry of Paul where Paul took the gospel of grace to the Galatia churches. Now, I emphasize the gospel of grace because we know that Paul is the purest apostle that came with the revelation. We know that Peter and all the others always struggle by bringing Judaism into the new covenant. But Paul, even though he was a master in the law, even though he sat at the feet of Gamaliel, even though Paul says that he was a teacher of teachers, we know that God took Paul to the Arabian desert for 14 years to de-law Paul and to gracify Paul. Where Paul now says that God downloaded revelations to me, uh, things that I can't even divulge when you go to the book of, of Corinthians uh, um, 12, but where Paul speaks about how he received a personal revelation from God and Paul even calls it three times my gospel. So Paul had a distinction and a distinct revelation of the purity of the gospel of grace, not to mix it with Judaism or mix it with the law. 
even though Paul was called to the Gentiles and the Jews equally, at the end of the day, Paul became almost exclusive to the Gentiles because Paul never came to the Gentiles and tried to present circumcision as part of salvation, as part of holiness, as part of redemption. But when Paul preached, he preached the unadulterated gospel of God's grace. And so it is in that context that Paul now went to these Galatia churches and I'm giving that backdrop for you to understand that if they receive the gospel through Paul, then it was the purest form that you could receive the gospel. It was not a diluted gospel where Paul would come to them and say that you must embrace Judaism to become better Christians as we see people today. They are born again, they are saved, and then they believe if they follow Jewish traditions, it will make them more holy. It will bring them closer to God. Christ came to fulfill the law, as I will show you. And Christ came to nail the law to the cross. And Christ came to bring us complete redemption. So with that backdrop now, Paul took the gospel to the Galatia churches. The Galatia churches were not Jewish descent believers. It was not people that practiced Judaism. Now Paul came to them, gave them the gospel where they now had to, had, to, had to renounce Judaism in order to come into salvation through faith. No, these were Gentile descent believers. So they've never practiced the law of Moses. They never had the law of Moses. And when we talk about the law of Moses, we're not just talking about the Ten Commandments. We talk about the 603 other laws that was added to the Ten, which is 613 of them. So now Paul has given the gospel to the Galatia Gentile descent believers and they have been saved by grace through faith. They have come into the revelation that their sins has been paid for, that Jesus has paid for their redemption, that by faith they have eternal life. They have come into the revelation that when you say yes to Jesus, he imputes his righteousness to you where you have access to your Father's presence 24-7, only on the basis of your faith in what Christ has done. So with all of this they have received, after Paul gave them the purity of the gospel, Judaeus came in, Jewish rabbis, Jewish philosophers, and now they were contaminating the minds of these Gentile descent believers who were saved by grace. So it's in that context that Paul is writing what he's writing here. I want you to get the picture now. They were free in Christ. They were redeemed by faith. And now they have been confronted to say, Christ is not sufficient. You must add to Christ. Go read Galatians. You must add observing of days. You must add circumcision. And so Paul now is addressing them because they fell for these tricks of the Judaizers who want to take them from freedom in Christ and put them back under the curse of the law. And look what Paul is now saying to them. I marvel. Another translation, Paul says, I am astonished that you were so easily turned away from the grace of Christ to another gospel that is not even a gospel. <laughs> now, you must see what Paul is saying here because Paul is dealing with something that is very peculiar in the context of the church. Many of us, when we got saved, remember the enthusiasm, remember the zeal, remember the excitement, remember how you, it felt like you walk on cloud nine. Your, 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 your faith in God was so strong. You would testify, you would, before you even ask, you think about something and God supply. And then you fell into the, into, the, into the claws of religion where subtly now the law was brought into your faith. And what you must understand is, as I will show you as we progress, that you cannot live by faith and live by the law because the Bible say the law is not a faith. So look what happens now. So Paul is saying, I'm astonished that you so easily turn away from the grace of Christ to another gospel that is not even a gospel. That even if I or an angel from heaven comes and preach any other thing that was preached to you, let him be a curse. 
So now you go to Galatians chapter 2 verse 21. Now Paul goes on and Paul says that if righteousness came through the law, then Christ died in vain. In other words, if I was able to earn my righteousness, work for my righteousness, add to what Christ has done, then I am literally saying that the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Christ was in vain because I am able to do what only Christ was able to pay. And so now you go to Galatians chapter 3. Very interesting. Now Paul comes and Paul says in verse 3, uh, chapter 3 of verse 1, Paul says, Oh, he foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? That after you have started in the spirit, you are now ending or operating in the flesh. Now read the scripture in context. He calls the way they started in the spirit. He say where they are, they are now operating in the flesh. Which means that when you live by grace through faith, you live by the spirit. When you live by the law, you live by the flesh. I will explain that as our weeks proceed. So then Paul goes on and Paul says, did you receive the spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Did you receive the spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? You cannot receive the Holy Spirit if you live by the law. You cannot be led by the spirit if you live by the law. Those who, are, who, those who live by faith and those who live by faith they are the sons of God. And it is by the spirit that his spirit cry out with our spirit, Abba Father. And so now Paul goes on and Paul says, Paul says, did you receive the spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Has he worked miracles amongst you by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Paul goes on and Paul now addresses the issue where Paul shows them that the moment you revert to the law, you revert to the flesh. The moment you revert to faith, you revert to the spirit. So Paul is addressing the issue of them that went from freedom in Christ and be put again under the yoke of bondage. Now, there's a powerful verse in verse 10 that comes. But let me just look at verse 1 again. Galatians 3 verse 1. Oh, he foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? These are powerful words that Paul is speaking to the Galatia churches. Paul is saying to them that because you have reverted back to the law, you are bewitched. Now, I lived in the trans guy for 21 years and I understand that you never go to a, a Sangoma and ask him to bless someone. You always go and pay your money to curse someone. So if Paul says that you are bewitched, then Paul is saying that you are under a curse. Why is Paul saying that? Look at verse 10. Galatians chapter 1 verse 10. Paul now says in verse 10, whoever wants to operate by the works of the law is under a curse. So do you want to tell me that after they have come to the freedom of the revelation of justification by faith and they now allow Judaeus to come and influence them with the law of Moses and put them under the yoke of the law that I'm going to show you that was never even given to us as Gentiles. The law was simply just given to Moses and Israel, never given to the Gentiles. We came in and were grafted into the better covenant that is based on better promises that far exceeds the inferior covenant of Moses. And so Paul now say to them, Paul now say to them that whoever wants to operate under the law has placed himself under the curse of the law. People when Paul speaks to the Galatia churches, there are places where he say to them, you who wants to be under the law, do you understand the law? There are places where Paul says, it is fine. You can live by the law if you want to, but you have to keep all of the law. Because Paul says, if you fail in one of them, you are judged for all of them. And that is not just 10, that is 613. 
And remember the law, ignorance of the law is no excuse to break the law. So even if you didn't know <laughs> and you want to live that way, you're going to be judged that way. Beloved, under Christ, we have such a superior covenant. We have such a better covenant based on better promises where I don't have to think about things that my flesh will not be able to do, but I simply walk in faith by the Spirit and put my trust in Jesus and allow the life of Christ to manifest in me and give me victory on areas that I will never be able to be victorious by myself. So Paul is now saying that you have put yourself under the curse of the Lord. Let me show you how the law works. I've seen it so many times in church. People want to play by the law and they want to play by the law almost when it suits them. I've seen it. It's almost like when you look at Africa and I can talk a lot on politics. I have a passion for the continent. But even when you look at Africa, and I'm going to use it as an illustration. In Africa, we understand that the African context operates on a chieftain context. In Africa, they are chiefs, they are subordinates. People understand a chief is in his position, subordinates are in their position. But what you find many times in African governments, when an African president see that Western democracy works for him, then he runs with Western democracy. But when Western democracy pushes him in a corner, then he reverts back to chieftaincy. <laughs> it's almost like he realized, now look, if I'm going to follow the Western pattern and I'm going to follow Western democracy, it's election time now. So if in elections I lose, then if I follow Western democracy, I must relinquish my seat. But the moment he see that the votes are getting tight, he now reverts back to African chieftaincy, where a chief must die in his seat. So he plays between Western democracy and he plays between African chieftaincy. Some people want to play with the law like that. The things they feel they can keep, they revert to the law and then they want to put yokes on other people to also keep it. The things that are too heavy, they say, no, there's grace and they run to the cross. But you're playing a very dangerous game if you play with the law. For instance, a person comes in church and testify how God has blessed him, maybe blessed him with a tender or a massive business opportunity. And then he tells the church, and the reason why God is blessing him is because he's giving. And especially when he attaches it to the issue of tithing. I'm not talking about that now. I can say a lot about that. But I'm giving you an illustration. Now, if you take glory for that blessing that came your way and base it on your giving, then it means that you are saying, I am blessed because I have kept the law. Now, remember how the law works. If you live by the law, you have to keep all of the law. If you now make a mistake and you're not able to do what the law requires, then what happens now? The law now comes to take what the law has given you because that's how the law works. Let me illustrate it this way to you. Let's say a person has worked for a company and he worked for a company for 25 years. The day he enters the company, there was a simple rule. You were here nine in the morning, you leave five in the evening. If you ever, ever violate that rule, you lose all your rights. You work for the company for 25 years to the day. It's the day of your retirement. On the last day, of your retirement, you had an issue and you come late. You have now violated the law based on what your contract was built on. So it so happened you get to the office late, your boss calls you into the office whose name happens to be Mr. Law, and your boss say to you, for 25 years, you faithfully kept to the contract and were here every morning at nine o'clock. But on the last day of your coming, <laughs> you missed it. Contractually, you're in violation now because you've, you've failed the law after 25 years. So your boss now is saying to you, all your benefits that were supposed to be paid for you based on your retirement is now retrieved from you because you failed in your contract. But not just that. This is the tricky part. Everything we have paid you for the last 25 years, you must give back. <laughs> Can you see why people who wants to who wants to say it's because of what I have done that God has blessed me and then when you fail the law must come and take everything that you had that is why there's so much inconsistency in the way 
we operate and walk in the favor of God. So I want to say to you, go on and live by the law, but you have to keep all of it. If you fail in one of it, you are judged for all of it. Christ gave us a better deal. Now let's just look at what the Bible now say further. How strong Paul comes. Galatians chapter 5 now, verse 1. Look what Paul says. Read it in the context how I explained. I gave you the background of the Galatian churches. I gave you their salvation by grace through faith. I gave you the desires came in and want to revert them. So you have to read Galatians in that context. You cannot read every chapter aloof from the overall context of the book. So he comes to verse chapter 5 now. And now Paul says in chapter 5, Stand therefore firm in the freedom by which Christ has set you free. Can you see the context now? Paul is not dealing here with sin. Paul is not dealing with sin in Galatians. He's dealing with the curse and the bondage of the law. He now says, stand therefore firm in the freedom by which Christ has made you free and do not again be entangled in the yoke of bondage. What is the yoke of bondage? It's not sin he's talking about. He's talking about revertance to the law after you have come into the revelation of salvation is by grace through faith. Look what he says further now. I say unto you, if anyone let himself be circumcised, anyone let himself be circumcised, he has alienated himself from Christ. Then Paul say, again I say unto you, if anyone let himself be circumcised, he has alienated himself from Christ and he has fallen from grace. This is powerful. It relates exactly back to Galatians chapter 1 verse 6. Listen to Galatians chapter 1 verse 6. I am astonished that you were so easily turned away from the grace of Christ to another gospel that is not even a gospel. He comes to chapter 5 and he says, Stand therefore firm in the freedom by which Christ has made you free and do not again be entangled in the yoke of bondage. What is the yoke of bondage? The law that they went to after they've come by salvation through faith. Then he says, I say unto you, if any one of you let yourself be circumcised, this is powerful. You have alienated yourself from Christ and you have fallen from grace. I am submitting to you, a believer who have received Christ who have eternal life, cannot fall from grace through sin. When a believer sins, he falls into grace because the more sin abound, the more grace abound to restore him, to redeem him, and to bring him back into right standing with God. The only way you can fall from grace is when you have come to the revelation of faith through Jesus Christ and now you want to revert back to live by the law. You have alienated yourself from Christ and you have fallen from grace. Many of us are following another gospel that is not even a gospel. I want to say this to you. Stay with me on this journey as I will open up the scriptures and show you that the gospel is nothing else but good news. And the gospel is nothing else but Jesus Christ crucified, resurrected, and who gives us eternal life as a free gift by faith. All you have to do is, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ, Believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. You shall be saved. Your salvation is just a confession away. A confession of Christ. That he died. That he was buried. That, he's, that, he, that, he, that he rose. And that he lives forevermore. I trust that you are blessed with this second program. And I just want to pray with you. Maybe today you feel that you feel far from God. God is near, God is in you, God is with you. Maybe you feel you have failed so deeply that God no longer wants you. I just show you, you cannot fall away from God through sin because Christ dealt with sin. The law is the biggest enemy of God in the day and age we live in because the law is your effort. But grace and faith is what Christ has done. Father, we thank you for those who are listening and those who are walking on this journey. We pray for those today who feel that they have backslidden who feel that they have walked or lost God. We thank you that you are with them and in them. And as they confess Christ, we thank you that you restore them back into their glorious position of righteousness. Bless every household where this program is aired. 
And we thank you for the way you are going to transform people and bring them to the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ. I pray that you will take this journey with me, tell your friends about it, and let us discover the freedom that Christ brought. My name is Peter Barnes, and I'm representing Grace uh, Peter Barnes, Grace Ministries, and I come into your house with nothing else but good news. And remember, good news can never make you feel bad. Remember this as I end every week, that God is not against you, but God is for you. God bless you. Have a blessed week. We'll see you next week. Amen. Thank you.